Good day. Welcome to another lesson on, uh, on our entrepreneurship master program. Uh, today we are looking at how to manage finances for, of a business, which is generally called finance for non-financial managers. But in this case, it's finance for entrepreneurs. In this uh, skills program, we are looking at the finances. How do you manage the, the finances? How do you do your bookkeeping? Meaning, how do you record your financial transaction? And how do you prepare your income statement? And we explain what is an income statement. We have different modules in, the, in this way. One, the first one is on bookkeeping. We look at bookkeeping, how do you record transactions, how are you supposed to record transactions in your, in your books. Okay, as an entrepreneur, you don't necessarily have to know the, the technicalities of how finance and how accounting is supposed to work. All that this program is doing is to give you knowledge on how it, they are prepared so that you will be able to interpret and manage your accountant or your finance department. Because generally, uh, SMEs from uh, the beginning or at the beginning or at, at initial stages, at startup phase, they, they don't necessarily need to have an internal uh, accountant or finance department. You can manage them on, on your own and uh, maybe on a monthly basis you can give your invoices to your accountant to prepare the financials and management accounts and submission of tax returns and other returns to, to SARS. And then you can just maybe read the, the financials to understand where are you or where you are in terms of the progress, the, the business progress, are you making profit? How's your balance sheet looking like, cash flow and all that. So this course is not to make you a financial manager because that's a, a three-year course on its own, but it's to give you a perspective and overall knowledge or, or overall guide in terms of how what goes on when people are preparing financials. We're going to look at bookkeeping and then how to uh, present and interpret your income statement, which is, which is your profit and loss, if I can put it that way. So income statement shows you uh, the income that you have made, the expenses that you have incurred, and at the bottom it shows you if you are making profit or not. And then we have uh, the balance sheet. The balance sheet shows you the, the financial position of the business, meaning where are you? Because the balance sheet is made up of your, all your assets, your liabilities, and what is called your owner's equity. It means um, the, assets is, the assets that the business have bought, like your equipment, your computers, uh, can include furniture and fittings. So you take the, the cost or the amount that you paid, you're going to record them as assets in, in your balance sheet. Then you have liabilities. Liabilities are the money that the business owe other people. Uh, liabilities can include loans if you funded your business. It can include creditors if you are buying on, on credit. And then it can include maybe if you owe, let's say SARS rent, if you pay your rent in arrears, then that makes the liability. So basically, liability is the money that you owe. And the owner's equity is the profit that the business have made, have made over the years. It's basically, you retain a uh, profit. And sometimes if you put in equity, you bought shares in that business, the, the value that you paid for those shares, they become your equity. So that's what makes up the, the balance sheet. It's mainly those three items. And then you have the cash flow. Basically, they say cash is key. So the cash flow shows you your cash position in terms of uh, the business. How is the business performing cash-wise? Are you generating a net positive cash flow or are you making a loss? So with the cash flow, it's, it's got similar principles as the income statement. But with the cash flow, you only take your cash. The only difference between your cash flow and your income statement, the main difference is that in your income statement, you also record your what they call depreciation. Depreciation is when the asset lose value. 
but that is not a cash item it's just a an accounting transaction uh, so that you recorded in the in the income statement but it's not in the cash flow there might be other and uh, non-cash items like valuations and profit on sale of assets where they're not a true reflection of the cash so on the cash flow the cash flow is the okay all the statements are important but on the the cash flow will show you if you are making money like physically are you making cash cash money Do, are you generating positive cash flow but with the income statement income statement it makes you it, it shows you if you are making a profit so um, sometimes you can make a positive cash flow but the business still you find that it's not profitable so if you make a positive cash flow like if you sell assets to show that you made cash cash came into the business but when it comes to the income statement the income statement will take into account the depreciations the book value and all that it might not show as a positive income so you can you cannot read one without the other so when you're reading your your financials you need to look at your income statement are you making profit balance sheet is your into your assets are they more than your liabilities because if you operate where your liabilities exceed your assets they say you are technically insolvent so if you are technically insolvent you can't trade if you are technically insolvent as a director you can be sued because you'll be reckless and then you want to be solvent when you're looking at the balance sheet and when you're looking at the uh, the income statement you must be making profit so those are the three main figures that you look at are you solvent is are your assets exceeding your liabilities on the other side are you generating positive cash flow on the income statement are you making profit those are the key figures that you're supposed to be using to to check the health of your business and then we we also look at the fifth one you look at the ratios so the ratios they convert absolute numbers into ratios that they basically you use the financial ratios to interpret the financial the, your financial financial statement remember i said your financial statements consist of your income statement your balance sheet and your cash flow right uh, okay let me start from the beginning to prepare your financials you need to do bookkeeping meaning you need to record all the transactions that are happening in your business you need to record them and then once you record them then from the transaction that you have recorded then you generate the financial statements which which are your income statement as i said that's supposed to show you your profit you generate your balance sheet which is supposed to show you if you are solvent and then you generate your income statement which shows you if you are generating positive cash flow so those are the, the second phase in your preparation of your financials and then once you prepare those then to interpret the financials you need to prove uh, to do ratio analysis so with the ratio analysis sounds compli uh, complicated but it's just to show to interpret the numbers that you have in your income statement balance sheet and cash flow so the ratios they just try to make sense of the numbers remember i said you can't read the financial those statements in isolation so you need to read them as ratios so i said if you're reading the cash flow you read them the three of them to say am i generating positive cash flow on the balance sheet am i solvent on the income statement am i profitable so if you can answer those uh, questions with a positive yes then you know that your business is healthy then you go into the financial ratios now you are going a little bit deeper to see where you're making money like you will calculate what they call like, like your gross profit it shows you if the cost of the things that you are selling are you making a positive profit from the cost of sales before you even take into account other administrative costs or maybe you, you calculate the number of days in stock which shows you how long do you keep your stock because the longer you keep your stock the more you lose money or uh, it shows you days in your debtors it shows if you have 
a, a high number of days in your debtors, it shows that your debtors are not paying you in time. So you are funding your debtors, which is a bad business. Or the number of days in creditors. If you are taking longer to pay your creditors, if it's, it's, it's intentional, then that works because as a business, you must, you must not pay your creditors earlier than you should unless the cost or the interest that they charge you is very, very high. But generally, maybe if you buy on credit, they generally don't charge you um, interest on that. So you can, if you can delay and still maintain the relationship with the creditor or the supplier, then you are good. You must delay the payment of your creditors as long as you can. All right, but sometimes it, it, it can happen to you because if your customers, they don't pay you on time, then it can cause a, a little bit of a cash crunch. So it's like with government. Remember the government saying they need to pay uh, their suppliers within 15 days. Is that thing that because they knew or they understood that they were crippling small businesses by taking long to pay them. Hence, the, um, the government had taken the policy to say uh, departments must pay uh, small businesses within 15 days because they know small business can't survive for long with uh, customers not paying them on time. Okay. So I was just giving you the perspective or the, the summary of finance for non-financial managers or how to manage your, your business finances. So those are the key things that you look at. It can go deeper than that where you're looking at complicated ratios, you're looking at your owner's, um, owner's equity and owner's equity statement and all those things. But these are the basic uh, reports that you're supposed to look at and you must be able to interpret them. But we went in, in detail when you, we, when you can watch the videos on, on these topics because we, we have broken them down and explained them uh, in a lay, layman terms so that uh, entrepreneurs who didn't do finance or accounting as, as, as the subject, they can be able to comprehend what we're talking about. Okay, so today we are looking at the uh, finance for non-financial managers case study which is, we're looking at the three case studies that we are using throughout the, the, the program. We're looking at the McDonald story, we're looking at uh, a AEY story, we're looking at the Oakland A story. So uh, we, we identify uh, scenes from these movies, because the McDonald story is based on the, the movie The Founder. But you can read, uh, grind it out, you can read behind the, the arches, they, they tell the same story. Even if you didn't watch the movie, but if you read these two books, they tell you the same McDonald's story, or more or less. Obviously, the authors are writing differently. And on the Oakland A's is based on the book Moneyball, which was later converted into a movie with the same name. So you can watch the movie and you can read the the book. It will give you. It will tell you the story of the Oakland A's, how they they changed the baseball game. And then the third. Case study is uh, AUI, which is based on the movie War Dogs. War Dogs is a movie about a young, 20, early 20 year olds who were in a tendering business and they secured big contracts from the Department of Defense and then they eventually were arrested because they were not doing the right things. And the movie is based on true story. Okay. Obviously, it's a movie, so sometimes things get a little bit exaggerated. So those are our three case studies. And then we, we, we look at each skills program that we are each skills, skills program that we looking at, and we're trying to, to practicalize it using these case studies. So now we're looking at finance for uh, managing business finances. And okay, for a change, because we normally look at from a uh, McDonald's and you go to AUI and then we do the Oakland A's. For now, for this one, let's, we'll start with the Oakland A's uh, case study and then do the AUI and finish off with the McDonald's story. All right, so with uh, the Oakland A's, 
if you if you look at the the organization right it was a formal structure where uh, you had the the general manager who was billy billy bean and the the story is focused on billy bean in terms of what he did and then we had coach howard and then you had uh, the the manager the the owner so those were the three key players in in the Oakland A story so you can see that already from there you can see that there was a structure in place where you have the the owner you have the um, the manager and we have the coach so there was segre segregation of duties which is one of the key things when it comes to to financial management right the Oakland A's had a proper structure because they they had the three se uh, segregation of duties between uh, the manager who was uh, Billy Bean and the coach Art and the, the owner Steve so in that because they had that structure uh, it was a good basis to to have good call it corporate governance but in this case financial controls because when it comes to financial management you need to have proper segregation of duties and it also comes through when Billy was looking for for funds to fund the acquisition of the players or to buy players so for him to to buy players he needed an approval from the owner who was Steve so Billy didn't have unlimited authority in spending so for to spending like he could spend for operational activities like for the traveling buying the kids and all kids and all that so but you couldn't uh, buy players without an approval from the owner in this case is steve so that now shows that the way financial controls that were in place even though uh, the the movie doesn't go in detail in showing the accounting side of things but from the high level in the engagement you can see that uh, Billy was responsible for the operational cost so he was responsible for you know for paying salaries and uh, making sure that um, he pays players and you know like the the operational cost so what are operational cost versus the capital expenses because by by the look of things uh, billy had was responsible for the the working capital and the operating cost and the operating income and steve was responsible to for a uh, capex like buying of players so was responsible for major expenses so from from that scenario will i'll go in detail in terms of what are the operational costs and then what are the capital expenditure so that you can see the the difference between between the two roles that uh, billy was playing and what steve was playing so when it comes to running a business right there are two things that you spend money on is to the cost to operate the business which is referred to as uh, operating expenses or at operating costs and then you have uh, expenses that you pay to buy assets like if you are running a, a spaza shop then you need to buy shelf you need to buy fridge you need to buy uh, maybe what else i don't know maybe uh, counters you need to set up the counters where you can you can sell from uh, the the cash register those are called uh, assets so those are the capital expenditure so generally capital expenditures are the cost that you buy you you spend to buy assets that you're going to use for more than a year and then operating costs are the cost that you you pay or you you pay for items that you're going to use during the period during the year so the items that are under operate operating expenses are those items that you use regularly within the operation so in this case of the Oakland A's the, o the Oakland A's um, Steve was responsible for the capex to buy players okay in this case they were trading players often but players are 
considered assets in the setup of a, a club or sports club. So P, uh, Steve was responsible for that. So he had the budget. He was the one who was controlling the Capex budget. And then Billy was responsible for the operating expenses. So this is what generally happens. Even in, in corporates, you find that you have a responsible manager who is responsible to do the budgeting for their departments, but they can only do to a certain uh, to a certain level and then if it comes to a certain level of expenses depending sometimes you said the the amount sometimes it's based on the type of uh, item that you want to buy so it's called segregation of duties so in the when you're managing your finances you need to make sure that there's always that segregation of duties between the responsible manager and maybe the executives so if you are a, a small business, let's say you have your employees, you will give them authority to spend on certain items up to a certain amount. If you're not doing that, uh, it's a big mistake because uh, you, you, you might fail to control the expenses as the business grow. So you must have a policy where your managers can approve or can spend money on certain items, items up to a certain amount and maybe uh, restrict them to spending on maybe certain items like you buying equipment and all those things the equipment must be approved by you as the owner or by you as the executive similar to how the Oakland A's have structured their their business in terms of the financial management component of it so Steve was approving the capital expenses and Billy was approving or approving the the operating expenses. So now let's look at the the operate, operating side or operation side. So on the operations, so Billy will control the 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 gate takings. So you need to make sure that the revenue that is has been generated by by the by the team is recorded accordingly. It's recorded in time. So that will be a uh, Billy's responsibility. And on the other side, you have Art, who's, who's the coach, and then Art will be responsible for mainly spending on the players, whatever the, the items that he might need for training, for, for going to matches and all those. So he'll be responsible for his department on the operational staff as well. But Billy will be the main guy that if the coach want something if art want something then you will have to request it from billy billy will approve the the expense because ultimately that profit and loss account the income statement remember i mentioned the income statement billy will be responsible for the income statement and then in this case the owner who is steve was more responsible for the balance sheet items so you remember when billy approached uh, steve to request money for to buy players and Steve said, no, Billy, we don't have money. Use the resources that you have, meaning use your operational budget to buy the players. I can't give you money that I don't have. So basically what Steve did, he looked at the balance sheet, he looked at the assets, he looked at the liabilities, he looked at the money in the business, the retained income. And from his analysis, the Oakland A's didn't have money to buy players. He told him that, look, I can't spend the money that I don't have. So basically, Billy didn't know that where, how the balance sheet of the Auckland A was looking like. Because that's why he went and requested money to buy players. But Steve knew the balance sheet, how the balance sheet looked like. He knew the assets that they have. He knew the liabilities. So he told Billy to say, no, we can't buy players because we don't have the balance sheet to support the uh, buying of the players so you go and use your operational budget to to buy the players so that's the the balance sheet. that's how you look at it and then now billy went back to to strategize with his uh team to say look we don't have the budget right to buy new players so steve he doesn't want to give us the budget so we don't have it so how can we utilize the operational budget to buy players so now on the operational budget billy's got certain income 
and expenses that you can control. The first income will be the income from a gate takings. So when the supporters come, they pay. And then you have sponsorship from, from you like we'll see in the stadium, you have boards for, for the sponsors. That's another uh, income. It's, it's, it's another type of revenue. And then they'll have profit or loss on sale of uh, players. So that's an, another type of income. So on the Billy's, Billy's side, he'll be, he controls the, the income. Uh, Steve on the other side is controlling, controlling the assets, liabilities, and the owner's equity, which is the profit. If Billy made a profit, then that profit gets transferred to the balance sheet that is uh, controlled by Steve. So on this side, as I said, he, he controls three things, the main things. The main revenue, which is the income that the business generates, it is called revenue. It's a fancy word for uh, sales. So Billy controls the gate takings, the income from sponsorship, and the income from trading players. Okay, so that's that's the, the top line. So when you're preparing the income statement, you'll have your top line where you show the revenue that the business has generated. So, as you sell players, you need to record it in your books. That's bookkeeping. In your books to say, we sold so many tickets and we made so much. And then, as you sell players, you need to record it in your books to say, we bought this player for so much, we sold the player for so much, we made this profit or we made this loss. And then, with the sponsorship, we received so much for sponsorship. So over a period, let's say you do the, that in a month, on a monthly basis, at the end, we'll have the, the annual one to say, for the whole year, we receive so much from gate takings, we receive so much from selling players, we receive so much from sponsorship. That will make your total revenue. That's the figure that you see on, on top of your income statement. It's called revenue. So that is under control. Billy can control that, can influence that. And he's the one who needs to to, to manage that, to make sure that uh, all the gate takings are, re are recorded, all the uh, income or losses from sale of players are recorded, and all the sponsorships are recorded, so that he can, you will be able to show when he's reporting to the, to the owners, he will be able to show that this month we generated so much revenue, or this year, if you consolidate them for the whole year, you'll be able to show we've generated so much revenue. Once Billy has recorded the, the revenue that he has generated, then he goes and look at the expenses that he spent in that period. So you're going to look at how much you paid for, for players in terms of salaries, how much you paid to maintain the, the training facilities, how much you paid to buy a paper, phone call, uh, phones, and all those expenses. Then you record those. As you pay suppliers, they need to be recorded in your accounting record, which is called bookkeeping, to maintain the books. So you record whatever the expenses that you pay, traveling cost, um, uh, medical aid, whatever the expenses that the businesses pay, you, rec you record that in your uh, system that you're using. It might be a pastel, QuickBooks, or you might be using Excel. It doesn't matter which system you're using. But with the Oakland A's, I'm assuming they're using proper accounting system. So once you record the expenses, then you're going to minus that revenue that you have calculated. You minus all the expenses, operating expenses. If you bought equipment, you bought vehicle, whatever, you put it on the balance sheet. Remember, we said Steve is keeping the balance sheet. So you, you don't put it here. You put it in Steve's balance sheet, which is, shows the assets and the liabilities. Then you put all the operating expenses and the difference between the income that you have generated and the expenses that you, you paid to run this club, then you, you'll get a, a, what we call the profit. So that's now your income statement. So when Billy was, was trying to buy players, Steve told him that in my set, the balance sheet, I don't have money to buy players. But you can use the money in your income statement. You can see that generally you didn't have enough money 
to buy capital expenses from the income statement because it's the income that you generate and you take out all the expenses that you've paid. So what Billy did, he said, he started trading players. But remember, he came up with that uh, system or he was using that Billy James system of identifying cheap players. So what he will do, he will sell his players to other clubs in the, in the league and he used that money that he gets for selling that player to buy other players. So that is a strategy that he implemented. But remember, to sell the, the players, he needed an approval from Steve as well because the players were assets that were sitting on Steve, uh, Steve's uh, account, the balance sheet. So he was selling stuff on Steve's account so, so that he can generate money to buy other players. And then he is here, and then he was, he was buying players. Then what he pays the players will be recorded in the income statement as salaries. You pay them salary, salaries. But if you buy new players, he's supposed to take the money that he bought the new players for and put it on Steve's balance sheet. Because players are assets, they are not operating expenses, they are long term assets. That means Asset is some, it's something that you pay for, you know how much it costs, and you're going to use it for more than a year. So a player can use it uh, more than a year. But if you decide to sell it in the middle of the year, that doesn't change it from being an asset. <coughs> Excuse me. The asset uh, definition is based on its um, form to say, are you going to use this? Can you use this for more than a year? If you can use it for more than a year, whatever thing that you bought, it becomes an asset and you put it on the balance sheet. The things that you buy for consumption, to use, to run the Auckland A's, to pay rent, you pay, what's rent you paid for the month? You're not paying rent for forever. So you paid for, for the month and then you use the facility and next month you pay. So that's why it becomes operational expense. So there were things that you buy that you know, you're going to use for more than 12 months, then they become an asset. They sit on Steve's assets on, the, on that uh, balance sheet that I explained earlier to say, this is the balance sheet that uh, Steve is sitting with, and this is the income statement that, uh, uh, what's his name? Billy was, was managing or is sitting with. So I was trying to uh, clarify the difference between the balance sheet and the income statement using the the, the Auckland A's. Now, between the balance sheet and the income statement comes the cash flow. The cash flow shows the movement in the balance sheet and in the income statement. So basically, the cash movement. When the cash is moving or the assets are moving, you need to record them in your, in your cash flow. So the income statement, the, the asset movement, they are not recorded. Even though Billy was taking the the players selling the players from the balance sheet he was not recording them in his income statement he was only recording the difference if he bought a player for 200,000 and he sold the player for 300,000 he makes the difference of 100,000 right so that 100,000 it becomes a profit on that asset you only record the profit on that asset and but on the balance sheet you take out that 200 that you bought that player for so your balance sheet will no longer have that player that you sold so you need to take it out of the balance sheet but in the income in the income statement you don't record the amount that you took it out of the balance sheet with you only record the difference between what you you sold the 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 player for and the amount that you have spent so if what you sold the, asset, the player for is more than what you had originally spent, that means you, have, you made a loss. So it would be a negative amount in your income statement. So that's how you look at uh, your income statement and balance sheet um, using the, the Auckland A's. And on the cash flow, the cash flow is when you monitor the cash movement. So you're selling the player for 200000 record it in the cash flow. You receive, uh, let's say you buy a player for 200,000. You record it as an outgoing amount because you are paying um, the other clubs for buying that player. And if you sell a player, 
you also record it in your cash flow. <coughs> if you buy bread, you record it on the cash flow. If you sell your book, you record it in the, in the cash flow as income. If you buy bread, you record it as a, the um, expenses. At the end of the day, on the cash flow, you take the difference between the money that came in into the business and the money that went out of the business. Then the difference will be, you show you if you are cash positive or negative. So if it's cash positive, is it will be the cash that you have generated during the that period and if it's negative is the cash that you have utilized during that period so that's that's how the three statements are are used or interpreted when you are presenting or when you are looking at your financial position as as the business and we're just looking at it from the the Auckland A's perspective now we're going to look at the AUI in terms of their financial records, what could have been transactions that were going on within their business. Now we're looking at the financial management from AEY perspective. As I explained earlier, this, this is a more of a tender business. And it operated with less cash flow, if I, so if I can put it that way. So with um, uh, AEY, okay, their, their balance sheet, they didn't have big balance sheet because they are running a service business. So it's mainly the business that are running serious operations that will have a massive uh, balance sheet. Remember balance sheet I said it records the assets that you are using as a business. So with the Oakland A's, their assets will only be the computers, the phones, the desk, excuse me, the desk and maybe if they owned the office where they were operating, then the office, the office building. But by, by the look of things, they were renting where they were staying, they were, where they were operating from. So the main assets that the, the Oakland A's had was the desk, uh, computers, maybe the phones. Those were the assets. So if you look at their balance sheet, it would have consisted of, of those three items. And then liabilities. From, from the story, you can pick up that they didn't have liabilities because what they were using is an equity investment from Ralph. Ralph fund was funding them. So as they secure uh, tenders, then Ralph will give them funding for 30% share in the profit. So that will sit as equity investment because he was, he was basically being paid dividends so it was more of an equity investment than a loan so they'll have the assets they'll have uh, the cash that they have in the bank as part of their assets and then at the bottom they'll have all the profits that they made over the years and their liabilities so the bottom part must be equal to um, the top part that's accounting equation all right so what this is on the on the balance sheet side on the income statement side the main expenses that they, they had probably to be paying your phone bills, your rentals, paying the, the employees, and what else? Yeah, that's it. That's, that's the, so probably the expenses. Obviously, water, electricity, the office, buying maybe the, pr the um, printing paper, buying pens, maybe, and then maybe maintenance of the IT system. Those were the operational expenses that they were paying. So those will go, will go into their balance sheet, no, into their income statement. In their balance sheet, it will only be the equipment, the assets, the, the computers that they were using, the phones, the desk. That's it. That's what, that's what will be sitting on their balance sheet. But on their income statement, you'll have the revenue. So once they tender, they win a tender, then they will deliver, then the money that they get paid. Is called revenue they will record it in their income statement and the money that they pay let's say they were buying guns the money that they spend on buying guns they will record it as a, a cost of sales and the salaries that they pay employees become payroll cost and you have other operational costs that they will take from the money that they've generated and then you will get your 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 profit from your operations so 
AY's financials were, were that simple. There's not much complicated. There were no complications because they were not owning too many assets. Unlike a, uh, the Oakland A's where the, you had the players on your balance sheet, sometimes when you sell them, you need to calculate how much you made, how much profit you made, or how much uh, into the losses that you made from selling those players. But with the um, AY, straightforward. You get a tender, you, you, you go buy whatever that you need to buy that you, you need to deliver to, to your customer. That is the cost of sales. You record it as the, the expenses. And then once the government pays you, you record it as the income and the difference between the expenses that you, the, the money that you spend to execute that tender, including printing, uh, maybe buying pens, electricity and such thing. You record them and you come up with the bottom line. The bottom line is what is called profit. Okay. And then with the AUI, their cash flow will be close to their income statement because they have limited assets. So they will not have major depreciation in their book. So the cash generated for AUI, it will be close to the, in, uh, uh, the profit generated because they, have, they didn't have many non-cash items. They didn't owe anyone. They didn't have debtors. They didn't have creditors. They have limited assets that they were not selling anyway. There will just be that amount. The difference between the cash flow from the cash flow statement of AUI and the income statement, the difference would have been the depreciation. And this applies to many businesses. The difference between if you don't have creditors, you don't have uh, debtors, meaning creditors are the people that owe you and debtors are the people that you why debtors are the people that owe you. Creditors are the people that you owe. So if you don't have those in your in your business, then your cash flow and your balance sheet will be not your cash flow and your income statement. Or the profit from the income statement and your cash flow that you should change they will be close the only difference will be your depreciation because a depreciation is the the the, the amount that your assets are losing value and that's a non-cash item you only record it in your income statement not in your cash flow so that will be the key difference between your income statement and your cash flow for a simple startup which doesn't have creditors, it doesn't have uh, debtors, it's not doesn't have liabilities, and it doesn't sell assets of it. So, average those will be the, uh, the 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 key differences if you are preparing the cash flow and the balance sheet. Okay. So, in terms of the financial controls, uh, you, we can identify the weaknesses of AUI when it comes to financial management because when they tend that for that Afghan deal, they had, uh, David indicated that when he was narrating the story, that they didn't have the financial records, which is bad business. Many businesses are fail because they don't maintain proper accounting records. So as an entrepreneur, don't be an AEY. Make sure that you maintain accounting records so that whenever there are opportunities, they might want to look at your financials. You must make sure that your financials are always ready for to, to be submitted. So that's the main thing. It's very, very important that you maintain proper financial system. It must not be AUI. Because when they turned out for that Afghanistan, Afghanistan deal, they had to recreate their financial record. So they faked certain things. They created invoices that didn't exist so that they can comply with the requirement of the tender. You must, in, you must not be caught in that situation if you are uh, an entrepreneur. Make sure that you put, you put together a proper financial, financial record. And then from the financial records, make sure that even when you are tendering, you do your homework. You calculate the cost, the total cost of servicing that tender. So that when you go and tender, you know how much it will cost you. Because if you look at David and Ephraim, they underpriced that uh, Afghan Afghanistan tender by 50 million. Now that shows a weakness from their side to say they didn't know what they're doing. 
because they didn't have a proper financial system in place. If you have proper financial systems in place, you will be able to project how much a project is going to cost you. And if you do proper pro projections, then you'll be able to come to proper pricing. Because without doing proper analysis of your cost of the product that you deliver, then you won't be able to come up with a good margin in terms of how much you're supposed to charge for your for your product. And I also and I always say like I've seen many small businesses where they are operating, they have activities going on, but they are not making profit. It's because they are not accounting for the expenses that they are incurring properly. You need to be able to break down the cost of the items that you are selling. If you are selling, if you are manufacturing, you need to know uh, how much does it cost. If you are, you are selling, let's say maybe this cover, you need to know how much you need to spend on material. You need to know how much you're spending on labor. You need to know how much you're spending on water, electricity, per product so that you know how much you can price it for because if you don't have the cost breakdown of an item that you're selling you don't know how much it costs you per product then you might not know how much you'll price your your product for and you might be looking busy having activities but to only learn that you're actually making a loss without you even realizing it that's what happened to to David and 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 Ephraim when they beat the they submitted their bid for for Afghanistan they were lucky that they met um, Henry Henry Gerard who facilitated that deal where they they got the the, the cheap uh, Chinese ammunition but if it wasn't for that let's say that deal fell through then they wouldn't have been to find an alternative supplier because they've charged less than they should have on that contract. So they didn't have an alter, alternative. If they went to Albania and maybe after they discovered that the, 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 the bullets that they were sold was, they were from China and while the US has sanctions against China, they couldn't have found, they couldn't have found a, an alternative. And this forced them to do something that they shouldn't have done to repackage the, the bullets and they saved that deal by repackaging them but it comes to uh, finances the mistake that they made in terms of costing for that tender so if you are costing for the tender you need to know and you need to have proper cost breakdown to say for me to supply maybe the department with this cover then i need to buy one two three four i need to spend so much on electricity i need to spend so much on labor this is how much is going to cost me per product so once you have the cost per product then you'll know how much you can charge reasonably charge so that you are able to make money okay i've seen so many businesses that are busy but they're not making profit it's because their costing is out of sync with how much they are charging so now that's what you can learn from how AUI approached their, their financial management. One, they didn't have financial management system in place. That led them to faking records when they were submitting their tenders to their tender to the Department of Defense. You mustn't do that because that got them in trouble and it will get you in trouble. Make sure that you have the financial system don't do don't be the uh, aui because if you don't have financial management system in place even the sars can come later and go through your records and they can see the money that's coming in and out of the bank and you can have a huge tax bill because you didn't have financial management system it will get you in trouble and then the second one is you need to understand the differentiate between your balance sheet journey and your income statement to be able to differentiate between your income statement and your cash flow because if you are not able to differentiate these three statements you wouldn't be able to make a informed decision when you're entering into transactions so you need to be able to to understand interpret the income statement interpret the cash flow and interpret the the balance sheet so that you, you will be able to make informed decisions when 
when you come, come when it comes to selling price when it comes to uh, the profit that you're making when it comes to the price that you need to charge the client because if you look at it the, as i said the afghanistan deal for these guys would have been disaster if that albanian uh, suppliers they decided to cancel the transaction they wouldn't have sourced from alternative source because the price that they charged it was below market so you shouldn't approach business like that you need to know how much it costs you to whatever that you're producing if you you're producing uh, covers you're producing laptop you need to break down that cost so basically you take if you want to get to get to the cost of maybe a laptop how much does it cost you take the cost of the buttons cost of the screen cost of the software then you consolidate them and you divide them by the number of the units that you have produced then you're going to have get your cost per per item and once you have the cost per item then you know how much you're supposed to charge for you to make profit so it's very very important to make sure that you maintain your financial controls and you understand what is going on in in your in what is going into the cost of producing items that you're producing even if it's services you need to know how much does it cost you pay employee to produce certain or to provide certain services don't be don't behave like aui make sure that you understand your your financial records your financial statements how you're supposed to do the bookkeeping so that you have uh, your financial statements in order you know the position of your business now we are going into the financial management of uh, mcdonald's okay here uh, you can see from from the movie that uh, ray was a good administrator because he made sure that he he hired an administrator to stay in the office to make sure that he keeps records of all the the transactions that were going on we remember even uh, as they were operating um, there was a point where Ray was not making enough money from the franchisees so the money that was coming through from th the franchises was not sufficient and June the secretary was able to to tell Ray to say Ray we have a problem we are running out of cash and Ray because Ray was not a financial person he was shocked to say how can we run out of cash then June explained that no you, you're charging 1.9 percent on this and then we take um whatever six uh, percent to to the mcdonald's brothers and then what how much three percent i can't remember the percentage but he explained how the money is being utilized within the the, the system then he was explaining to ray why they were running out of cash so for ray it was someone who was monitoring the uh, he, he appointed june to be the person who's monitoring the money that is being spent in the business so administratively you can see he had this basic financial management system in place and you know that it was in the 1950s so there were no computers then but i remember even when uh, harry sonneblom came to look at the books june just picked up these his cash books and gave it to to harry to to analyze and from the, uh, the analysis it didn't take harry long because the financial records were we're up to scratch to Harry to see where the problem was. So he explained to, to Ray to say, look, this one, where whatever, 1.9%, uh, it didn't take uh, Harry long to analyze the books to see that uh, Ray is not making money from that 1% that is charging the, the franchises. That decision was made quick because um, Ray had proper financial controls in place. He had proper financial systems. He had proper financial uh, records. So sometimes, yes, we don't see financial management as a necessity or as an important component of our business. I know like, uh, like entrepreneurs that I deal with, they just do financials for compliance. They're not using the financials to to manage their business which is the problem because if you're not monitoring how are you the business is doing 
you might think that you 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 making money you might have customers but without looking at your financial records in detail then you might find that you are, as a business you are not actually making money now what you can learn from from ray is that from the beginning he had proper financial controls in place i mean then he only had one uh, one store oh you are still building but still he had the, the proper financial records that a person can walk in and look at the financial record and make a decision based on the most financial records so that's one thing that maybe as an entrepreneur you need to learn from uh, the mcdonald story that you need to make sure that from day one maintain your proper financial records so that you'll be able to monitor what's going on in the business you'll be able to monitor if the business is making money or not so that is key to make sure that you have the financial control and as well make sure that you keep the financial records it will help you in future because you'll be able to uh, analyze the business to see where you're going wrong remember with ray the deal that you negotiated with the mcdonald brothers to charge the franchises whatever 1.4 or whatever the percentage that they were charging them he after analyzing the financial record he saw that that money is not enough to sustain him that's early on but if he didn't have june who was maintaining the records he might not have realized it until it's too late but because june was there he was able to tell she was able to tell him early on to say we are in trouble here we're gonna run out of uh, cash so do something about it remember ray was running around going to the to the banks trying to raise money but it was early on so if he was not maintaining financial records then there could have been trouble at mcdonald's we might not have known mcdonald's as it is because financial management is very very important but it's not only the recording of the transaction it's also the interpretation of the transaction because with with the into harrison blom coming in he was able to interpret the profitability of the business to see if this business is profitable or not so from that he was he was okay he was i guess he was a financial person but he was able to interpret and identify what was the problem from looking at the financial records he identified the problem of what was going on in the finances and he advised Ray that no this is not a sustainable business model then after he looked at it, the financials then he made a recommendation to say we need to go into the real estate business that was that that is what saved uh, mcdonald's from collapse and then they went into the financial um re, uh, not financial into the real estate business and by looking at the financial and management now uh, Harry was looking at the balance sheet not more on the income statement because when you're going to raise funding the funders are looking at the balance sheet do you have a strong balance sheet meaning do you have sufficient sufficient assets to give security to the money that you want us to borrow you yes you can tell them no the business is booming and all that but do you have in your balance sheet do you have assets to pro to to take a security for the loan that you're looking for that's the the the, the crux of raising uh, funding and the importance of making sure that when you start a business be strategic in terms of how do you want your balance sheet to look like because remember Ray, after june told told him that no no we're running out of cash he ran to the banks trying to raise money and the bank one of the banker asked him to say okay you say you have few sites that you have opened do you own those sites then ray said no then he said no we can't fund you because you don't have the balance sheet to support the funding that you're looking for unless you come back to say you have the assets on your balance sheet then we wouldn't be able to help you so that's where now harry sonneborn came with the strategy to say look for you to survive which obviously you're not going to survive on this one percent on the 15 cent beggar beggar so you need to buy the properties where you develop in the, the the restaurant and when you buy in the properties then they will be sitting on your balance sheet as assets 
then you can use these assets to go raise funding and it will make it easier for the bankers to give you money on the back of these assets because they're sitting on your balance sheet they have security they will be comfortable to fund you and true to god uh, once they moved to that strategy ray was able to raise funding to sustain the operation he raised money to even buy the mcdonald's brothers out that would never happened if uh, there was no change in the stra financial strategy or the financial restructuring of McDonald's where they were buying the land and putting the land on the balance sheet. Remember, as I explained, the balance sheet is where your assets are. So when you go into a financial institution looking for money, they'll look at, do you have a balance sheet? Do you have a strong balance sheet? And if you don't have the strong balance sheet, then they wouldn't borrow you money. Because most of financial institutions are looking for security. So, in your financial management system and financial management strategies, you need to think about these things to say, how best can I structure my financial statements so that they can help me going forward. So, but it's, it doesn't help to just put assets on your balance sheet for the sake of putting assets on the balance sheet. Because sometimes you can have a, what they call a lazy, asset, a, a lazy balance sheet. A lazy balance sheet is when, when you're looking at the revenue that you're generating compared to the assets that are sitting on your balance sheet, you find that you are not sweating the assets. The assets are not making you the money that is supposed to be, they are supposed to be making you. So you might have to sell those to make sure that you fund the operation. Maybe you fund the more, more on the working capital. Because some businesses require, uh, they should be capital intense. I mean, they have the, they're supposed to have high asset values and some businesses are not supposed to have uh, high assets as i've explained when we're doing the the aui story to say they only had laptops desk and maybe the printers on their balance sheet because there is the business model that they were running but with ray to expand and to attract funding he needed to have the assets on his balance sheet right and with the Auckland a's they they might have the the stadium on their balance sheet but it might not be worth it because they might not be fully sweating that asset because if you have stadium on, on your balance sheet and you're only practicing at that stadium uh, some weekends you are playing away then that means the the stadium will be sitting there uh, eating itself so you rather rent that stadium and you know that you only pay when you're going to play you only pay when you are utilizing that stadium. So that's now the balance between the three case studies to say the, the Auckland A's didn't need to have that stadium on their balance sheet because it would have been a lazy asset because they wouldn't have fully utilized it. The Auckland A, the um, uh, AY, they didn't need the balance sheet because they were not borrowing against the balance sheet. They had contracts and they were borrowing against the contract. Say, so here we have a contract, fund us to execute this contract. That's all that they needed. They didn't need the balance sheet. And then with Ray, it was different. The, the McDonald's needed the balance sheet to raise funding to develop new uh, restaurants. Because remember, the restaurants are capital intense. So you need a security from this asset to develop another asset so that you can continuously grow. So that's the, the difference in terms of the financial management structure or the balance sheet of the three case studies. So it is important for you to understand the industry that you're operating in. Should you be, it, it does it require you to be asset heavy or operational heavy? Some businesses, they work well by only working capital. You don't, you don't even need uh, physical uh, assets. This you can be an online business. Instead of setting up the warehouses and warehouses you just connect the from the supplier to the customer the products they don't even have to to come to you it's a different model so you don't have to invest in assets you just have to invest in stock so that when you order the, the logistic company can go deliver at your your customer without you owning the assets so there are different models so uh, the finance is, is not at all about recording transactions, balancing the balance sheet. No, no. They are, finances are a strategic part of your business. 
you need to make sure that you are strategically in terms of how you manage your finances and where you put in your money do you want to carry as assets you want to uh, to be asset light does it work for your expansion strategy to have assets in your books like the mcdonald's that like ray needed the the properties on his book to to expand the uh, the mcdonald's operation so don't look at finance as strictly the recording of transactions and paying of sars yes those are part of finance but finance can be strategic instrument that you use to expand your business it can be um, if you manage your finance properly and strategically then you can benefit from the uh, utilizing different financial instruments thank you that is the lesson on our case studies on uh, finance or managing finance for for your business hopefully there's some lessons that you you learned from this session i thank you